Yeah. Good. All right. Uh, welcome everyone to the Town of Brookfield Select Board meeting Thursday, October 3rd, 2024. Please stand to pledge your flag. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, this meeting is being recorded in live stream. You're the only other ones that I can see recording. Yep. Um, signed warrants. All right, item number one, interim highway superintendent, general discussion, salary, grant writing position, et cetera. What are you doing? Uh, yeah, Mr. Mr. Chairman, before we get, I guess, into the, the details, one of the questions I wanted to put out to the board is in considering the compensation and the job responsibilities for the interim superintendent, is whether or not the, the board would like to enter into a contract, a short-term contract for the interim superintendent, or if they choose not to. If the board chooses to enter into the short-term contract, then I believe that those discussions and details should be discussed in executive session uh, for, for the reasons, uh, yeah. exemption number two. Yeah, have, have you verified, Ron, that that's one of the positions that we're entitled to contract? Because I think there's very explicit positions that we're in, entitled I, I to have contract. not. We did before, though, for an interim. We had a, uh, it was a letter, but it wasn't technically a contract. Oh. So it was an offer letter, not. Gotcha. So there's a difference between like an offer we, letter and a contract. Carried? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't a. There was like, like written terms, but yeah. it's the same as an offer letter. Okay. So an offer letter, although it's. No, I see. I see. The th yeah, there's there's a, there's a there's a, there's a fundamental difference yeah. between the two, though. There yeah. there are legal implications to giving somebody an offer letter. It's not the same as a contract. Yeah. And I remember from. And I don't rem I, I don't remember which positions. I remember at one point we had wanted to do a contract for. A position I don't know if it was highway superintendent or not and Kelly advised us that it wasn't like legal in the state of Massachusetts okay so I, I did not talk to KP law to have a legal opinion with regards to contract for the superintendent position okay. so if we do I, I not mean, enter a contract then obviously the discussion would have to be an open session well I think you can I mean the exemption I, I mean, I wanted to make, I wanted to specify that so that if we, if we did go into executive and came out and it wasn't technically a contract, that somebody didn't like file a complaint against us because it wasn't technically a contract. However, I think if you do look at exemption number two, it does allow for negotiations with non-union personnel um, in general, as well as, as for, for a contract. But I, I didn't want to specify that aspect of it. Yep, fair so, enough. Fair enough. Um, I, I think that would, I think that would in part be up to Lindsay as well. Correct? Whether. Yeah. Would. Okay. Yeah, both parties would have to agree. Okay. So, um, I'll make a motion that we go into executive session for the purposes of negotiating. Uh, with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel for interim highway superintendent you, and return to open session after. We you you want to do that or do you want to go through and get people out and then do that? 
Sorry, Lindsay. No, okay. <laughs> we can we can fly through this agenda and then. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's. that's the rest of the agenda. Okay. So. Uh, I'm good with that. Okay. I guess. So then I'll make a motion that we take stuff out of order. Why well, make that motion? <laughs> What's that? Well, I guess. Should I make that motion or? No, I can make that motion. Oh, okay. It's your meeting. Second. I think you can make that determination without my motion, but. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, appointment Highway Advisory Committee. Would anyone like to make a motion for the two candidates? Well, we have three candidates now, right? Yes, yeah, so there was a third. Uh, letter of interest that was submitted literally just today. So there are now three. Okay, I'll make a motion that we uh, appoint oh, okay. Mr. Uh, Emery Manning to uh, uh, the Highway Advisory Board. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Resignation, police officer Patrick Clements. Um, Make a motion that we accept the resignation with regrets. Send him a note. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, appointment, police officer John Marty. I'll make an appointment. I'll make a you motion to appoint. Well, I'll, we'll bring it up. Oh, okay. Discuss. All right. So I'll make a motion to appoint police officer John Marty. Second. Any discussion? So I just was questioning how does it work when he's not graduated the police academy and he's, so I'm not sure. Did you have discussion with the chief, Ron? Uh, I haven't, but obviously he, would, he has to be uh, a graduate of the academy so he can be a certified police officer. So the appointment would be contingent upon the successful graduation from the academy. In December, That's actually right? not the way that it works. Nope. That's, <laughs> that's in my, my previous uh, encounters. That's, okay, that's, not, that's not how we've done it historically because one of the things he's trying to do here is that he's trying to lock him in after yeah, graduation, so. right? Yeah. So um, historically speaking, we've even hired people and paid for the academy and paid them while they were at the academy mm -hmm. in order to do that. So the appointment would be effective October 6th. We'd start paying him while he's at the academy, unfortunately, is the way that this would work. If we vote to do this tonight, we'd be paying him while he's at the academy. His understanding would be that the expectation is when he graduates, he comes to work for us. Um, yep. I don't understand that. Because once he graduates the academy, I mean, what he explained to me is if we don't make this offer to him now, once he graduates the academy, someone's going to grab him. So this is a way to grab him before someone else does. And we've got a pretty, and, 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 I'm, and I know exactly where you're going to go is that several years ago, we had a lot of problems where we pay for people's academy and they bail on us. Well, okay. he could bail him in and he gets out when he's academy he, trained, he, right? He, and there's yeah. no way we can tie his hands to keep him here. So we, we, we actually, so other in the past, we have actually had him sign a letter that yeah, says. You can't, you can't do that legally. You can't bind that, Well, him. actually, you, you can. You can say that. You, you, do he a, could if, leave if, if we were If we were paying for his school, he would have to pay the school back. But he's already paid for his school. Mm -hmm. So. Absolutely, you're right. We, we can't bind him. We could wind up paying him for while he's in the school and he mm -hmm. wouldn't wind up working for us, okay? Mm -hmm. But it is a judgment call and either we support the chief or we don't support the chief. Hmm. I mean, it's been an ongoing problem for 35 years that I'm aware of, so right. I, I don't I mean, have our, an answer. Our, yeah, our right? recent track so, record has been good. I mean, we we even the folks we paid to get to, to school, they stayed three, four years. 
which isn't great, but it's not terrible either. So, and it, it's not the, you know, they graduate and bail. Now, of course, maybe Mr. Marty will make a liar out of me or a, at least an erroneous person out of me, but yeah, I would assume that the chief knows who he's talking to. Uh, I guess I'm still digesting it. I did not realize that was what was taking place. Yeah. yeah. You can think on it. Do you want to go ahead? Uh, we discussed this with the police chief at the many times, and he's trying not to do this because we, the taxpayers, are paying him by the hour. Is he paying for the school? No, we paying for that too. He already I paid for the school. Yeah. He's already paid. Yeah. So we're going to be paying him how, how many months? Six? No. 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 He, he, I months. believe he graduates Eight from weeks. the academy in early December. Eight weeks. Eight weeks. And what, is, what are we going to be paying him per week? $25 an hour. Yeah, so what's that, roughly $800 a week? Yeah, I'd say in that vicinity. Yeah, nine, yeah. Eight, nine $900 a week. About $900. Yeah. Close to 1000 yeah. yeah, so call it. Yeah, call it a thousand dollars. Seven grand, eight grand. Yeah. Well, why should we taxpayers keep paying for these offices? They don't, they don't stay that long. The chief strategy, he's been trying to get people with the academy certified because we keep paying for these guys and then they, they, they just take off on us. We're paying for it. Actually, most of the, I think the last two that we've paid for them to go to school, they've stayed three and five years respectively. So I don't know that you can define that as taken, I, I don't know you can define that as taken off on us. I don't think they've stayed that long. I though. think they have actually. It's just a practice that we're having here that we should not be paying to put someone to school on the town program, is my point. Well, in the last candidate. The he last had, candidate had it, right? No, the last candidate, he actually wanted us to pay for their school and which I think would have been more than this. Oh, way more. But, yeah. but to pay $8,000 and he starts work after December, it's, that's just the, but I, you know, maybe that's what we have to do now with the lack of Well, and the fact that he lives in West Brookfield, hopefully, I mean, unless West Brookfield grabs Picks him because they're short. <laughs> hmm. So it's just going to continue being a practice in our town when the chief said that he was going to try to get From my understanding, this was in the works before Patrick resigned. Hmm. He's been talking about this for probably the last month about doing this. Uh, agreed. Pa yeah. the, the Pat Patrick's resignation kind of caught him flat footed. I, yeah. I don't think anyone in the department realized that he, he was ready to go. Yeah. So why didn't he just get, get the academy and then come here and we'll hire him? We'll, we'll save him a spot so you get a job and you get the academy. I guess the problem is that he could go anywhere and possibly get hired now and then we would lose him. So what, but, what, what, what is there to right, keep exactly. what are we gonna, How are we going to keep him? Well, that, that's my sticking point. You can't force him to stay. Right. All right, I made my point. I just don't do we want to? So. Do we I'm wanna? still going to make a motion to appoint him. And so I don't know if I've got a second or not. But. I'm not ready to second it at this time. Well, I mean, the more I'm thinking about it, I think I want to, if we could hold off a week, I mean, I was going to talk about that at one point because there's stuff that's beginning to accrue on the agenda if we want to do a meeting next week. I'd be willing to have a meeting next yeah. week because I'd like to speak to the chief as well. It would buy me a week to do that. Question. Yep. Is this just, is that a common practice or is that just something you Is that a common practice? I think it depends on the community. And, and where their workforce level is, and whether they need help or not. It's, and I don't think there's any written, it, it it's fluctuates from town to town and from circumstance to circumstance, depending if they're short-handed or not. I mean, there's a certain amount of goodwill that you earn with the, there's a certain amount of goodwill that you do actually earn with the people, showing that you have, functionally have their back, and the likelihood of somebody, and I hear what, or, 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 or leverage them as part of the candidate, too. Right. So. 
I'd be willing to have a meeting next week and make a decision next week. I, I just did not. There's a couple it. things that are going through my head that I, I think I want to do some research on too. Just, just a quick question, just out of my own personal curiosity, is there? Do we have leverage? The person comes out of the academy as far as what salary we can offer, or is that just sort no, of? No, it's that's that's contract. Set by contract. Set by contract. So there's. And we used to have an academy rate, and we no longer have an academy rate in the contract. So, so that it's basically it's just a question of location versus any other town. They all have to offer the same rates. Or no, no. no, every town pays different. Yeah. So we pass it over, or what are we doing? No, well, there's a motion. Yeah, there's a motion. Yeah, there's a motion. So you didn't second it. Okay. I, I'm not going to second it. I've had a lot on my plate, so I haven't really looked at this one too much, and now I have a question. I, I, I could certainly invite the chief to yeah. a meeting. It sounds to be maybe next week, yeah. and he can explain the, the rationale I'd be behind it. To, I'd be more than willing to speak to him individually to not have to call him in, but it's, you know, it's the board's call. And I only talked to him briefly on the topic. And I mean, it sounded good when I had spoke to him about. I, I've had so many conversations with him over the years over the same topic. And this is this is a quarter loaf versus usually yeah. we're usually we're serving up a full loaf. This right. is only a quarter loaf. Right. I can't believe that we've 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 done. I mean, it's been usual and customary for us to actually go ahead. And if the chief has enough confidence in the individual based on his interviews and his relationships with them to recommend sending him to the whole damn academy and paying him while he's there and paying for the school. And and I hear what Mr. Holcraft is saying, but I think the statistics are on my side and, mm -hmm. I, and maybe the only thing I would want is for Holly to get the statistics on the fact that I think the, the least time we retained somebody when we paid for the academy was two and a half or three years, okay? This person is willing to sign up with us after they've already paid for the academy and commit to come work for us. I get that people feel that's extra money, but I think it's an investment in, in showing that we value the, the officers that we're bringing into the community. I, I don't have so. any problem with what you're saying, and I agree, to, I agree to some of what you're saying. Well, the problem that I have with it is I want to know are there other applicants? Have there been other applicants that are no. academy trained? No. And have, no. is he just wanting to groom a particular officer and that's why he's no. steadfast on that? I, I know, yeah, I know he's been dying for an applicant. So what my question and concern is, is a little bit different, is what happens if something happens to this guy before he comes due and we've now paid him? How do we... Well, if he's an employee and he's, say, injured at the academy, it would we be don't. handled just like an injured and on duty. And he's getting benefits. Yeah. Correct. Yep. And it would be considered injured on duty because if he's injured mm -hmm. at the academy, right. then it would be an injured yeah, on duty. Yeah, we own it that Yeah, we yeah. would own it for sure. Now we could sue the state. But. So, I, mean, I don't, I don't, okay, I don't so see it a big deal at a table in it for one week, but. Brad, you got someone else got someone else. Oh, go ahead. Isn't there any way we could feed back the cost of the academy over the time of frame with what we're doing? He, he's, we, well, we, we, could if, we could if we were paying for his academy, but the, the no, salary but, they get at the academy. I understand that, but yeah. how about, okay, you're talking about $8,000. How about you offer him $1,000 a month? To stay. To stay. And you're paying for it. But he's going to have to, if he wants that other stipend each and every so often, he'd have to stay to get it. It's a pretty good incentive. Well, I, yeah. I think and we'd have to do a little research. Well, the, I think, I think the, the, the problem, I think the problem is because it's not in the contract. While the contract sets minimum, Fundamentally, we can't offer somebody something over and above. More than either. another person. Yeah. So, so I think the challenge we may have is we might have to go back in the negotiations with the police union in order to get that. But I think that's a, that's a more viable way to keep people. 
Hmm. You, you're gonna get you're gonna get more money to help pay for whatever you agree upon. Who pays for, who's paid for the other academies, for the other? Well, it all depends. I mean, it's no, there's no set yeah, standard. Yeah. We, the town has paid for academies all but the not way in back. A while. No, I, I, in Beth's time, right? Yeah, we've paid for at least two people to go to the academy since I've been a selectman. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I think one we kept for, I want to say it was right about two two, two and a half years, and the other one I think stayed four or five. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think he'll flee. I just, because I have some doubts, I just want to now take a minute to think about it. And she's been a pretty decent judge of character. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's the only thing I can say, right? He has his moments on some stuff, but typically he's made some good hiring decisions. Again, I, and I've talked to him for a month about this, and it seemed like a good idea. And but I don't really want to delay it either. Um, I mean, you're good with it. I made the motion. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess what I I'm asked for one week to right. do some research. So I'm not going to second. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to also push it off because I want to flesh out. Would you like me to invite the chief to our next meeting, or you don't need to on my part. I'm. I'm going to go and visit with him. I, I'm going to do some research, and then I, I can go to him directly. Okay. Thank you. And I'll tell him to be careful what he says uh, if he wants to talk to me so that we don't wind up running a foul. Of <laughs> yeah. uh, personnel committee appointment, Beth Coughlin, discussion. And do we want to take lead? Who's taking lead? It says Ron will take lead. Yeah. Uh, this is to correct or I guess amend the decision that was made oh, several meetings ago with regards to uh, both Mr. Chafee and Ms. Coughlin wanting to be on uh, the personnel uh, board. There was, I guess, issues with regards to having two selectmen on at the same time. Uh, subsequently, we've had a resignation. There's now a full-time opening um, as a result. Ms. Coblin could certainly step in to fill that vacancy on a full-time basis, which would also allow Mr. Uh, Chafee to have a, f a full membership, if you will, as well, uh, instead of the kind of half-year membership that we had. So I guess that's issue number one. Um, the other potential issue that has been raised is whether or not there's really value added, for lack of a better term, with having a personnel board, especially since you, at this point, you would have two select board members on the committee. Uh, it's not as if the other members of the personnel board bring you know, HR, um, private sector HR experience into the equation. So one of the questions is whether or not the board even wants to have a personnel board, or would the board like to accept, as it had been doing recently, uh, personnel decisions. And the charge of personnel is really job descriptions and salary. Correct. Because any HR functions are handled by the treasurer. 
Yes, the benefits and right. things along those lines. That's so that's all the purview of the treasurer. Do we have anybody else that wants to be on the personnel committee? Uh, not that I'm aware of, Karen. Do we have any um, anything in the pipeline? Yes, there I don't either. On the personnel committee. <laughs> I just I can't pull it up right here. So, so, so in speaking to Lori regarding it, the personnel committee makes recommendations to the selectmen that the selectmen then put into effect. So essentially the personnel board doesn't really do any decision making. They just send it forward to the selectmen. Is that correct? I believe so, yeah. I, I so, could double check the bylaw, but that's generally how the personnel board will So work. based on that, I don't know I don't know why there would be a need for the personnel bylaw or personnel committee at that point. If we're struggling for members, then I think it's probably better for the select board to just take the whole charge. How many do we, members do we have if I don't go on? Uh, I believe it's four out of the, out of the five. In fact, well, let's see. Well, isn't it? No, she doesn't have them listed. Isn't it Brenda, Lori, Sharon? Brenda. And Holly and Holly resigned. Uh, Holly resigned, correct. Um, Brenda Laurie? and I'm not oh, sure I'm Lori's sorry. on I'm there. Sorry, Dave I'm Ford is on it as well. Doug Ford. Ford. Okay, yeah. Doug Ford. Doug yes. Ford, yeah. So maybe Lori's not on it. Yeah, Lori. Sure. I do not okay. believe Lori is. Yeah. Um, Sharon is. Sharon and by by virtue of treasurer office. Yeah. So here's the thing. I think historically we've had values separating that work. I, I don't have a problem with it. I only thought because you and I were both going to be no, on it. My, so. only pro my only concern fundamentally was that um, that doesn't matter. So I'll stay off. Let's see if we can find somebody else to fill out the board. Okay. If I might interject, um, just in my seven years of experience in trying to go through as it was an advisory things that I thought the personnel committee had, had done, I think it's important that there's an independent body because of all of the ad hoc work that we had to do through the last seven years to know who, who was on first, what was on second, I don't know who was on third. And I still am not clear, and at least for financial work that we do, the majority of the issues that we have contention about are all related to salary, roles, all of that. So, again, I know the selectmen are very busy with all the stuff that they do, so it is a way to keep the personnel board and make sure that it's doing its proper function, then I would certainly as a citizen and as the chairman of the advisory committee welcome that because I know, and again, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir, but the last three town meetings that I've been there, there's been confusion about what our numbers reflect because we weren't quite sure what something had gone on in the personnel or not gone on and, and it, it just you know I think it needs to be visible, viable and, and vibrant uh, as opposed to being you, you know something else. The bigger the problem is just getting the volunteers. That's that seems to be the issue. Uh, so hell, it, hallelujah. Right. You know and I'll I'll tell you my dumb story for trying to find people <laughs> for the advisory committee. So uh, where I've, I've emphasized, and again, I'm not getting on a horse, but the, the select board really need to push more from a communication standpoint to get volunteers involved in, in Brookfield. If you, know, if you like the community, we all you know, live here, we love it. We need to get people to put aside a little bit of their time to help with some of these committees. And there's been no other way that's going to be viable. You got HR experience. Can't believe you were trying. And, and, and just. <laughs> and, and just to confirm, uh, Karen has uh, indicated yes, Sharon, Brenda, Doug Ford, and Richard, the current members. So there's just the one vacancy. Yep. Great. So they can get it.
one. So Steve, can we get an ad put out there on the town website? Looking, I think there's been one. Is there? It's, yeah. It's been yeah. one, but we could write it explicitly and look and and ask for somebody with either HR experience or or, or whether it's small. I mean, if we all of a sudden program. had volunteers for that, I'd surrender my position as well. Yeah, well, I may walk across the street because I think Brenda. Karen or who? No, Brent's Brent, Brent and Brent. Parish. No, 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 no. Yeah, it is different. No, she's talking to someone I'm talking other about than Brent and Parish. Folks that live, folks that live oh. on the common. I'll, uh, I'll go knock on their door. I can't think of her last name right now. So you want to just table this then? Yeah. Well, so we, can we don't move need forward. to appoint me. Let's just move forward. You got four. You can run a meeting with four. You only need three of the four to show up. <coughs> So let's just keep going. Okay. Uh, Capital Improvement Planning Committee appointments, Martin Banish. I'll make a motion. Oh, he's, but it says he's current. He's already on there. No, current, no, current members, members are. are oh, yeah, myself. okay. So I'll make a motion to appoint Marty Banish to the Capital Improvement Committee. Second. Uh, discussion? I do have a quick question about this all together yep. is especially where Marty's now going to be on advisory and capital. The typically capital has a, mem has a representative from advisory. So why don't we just have like a finance committee that covers both tasks? I think the, the advisory committee, again, we have enough going on just Marty was basically, and before that it was, um, I'm trying to remember the gentleman, but whoever's been the vice chairman of the advisory committee traditionally has been on capital. On the capital, and they report back, and then we sort of coordinate it. The capital improvement committee comes up with a whole year plan, and then they let us know what's on the, because they're, they're a wish list, and then we, sometimes we have a joint meeting, we have in the past, but I think it's too much work for, again, the, Because he's going to report everything that happens at capital planning over to advisory. Right. I mean, he'll add an important voice also, but it, it, it's basically we just. It's too much, is what he's saying. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, we have enough going on with it. It's just like we have forms sometimes. Go ahead, Kermit. It's only. Right. There's only. With, with Marty, it'll be three. We need two more. I see what you're saying, but Jeff is saying that he doesn't 
feel like they could even handle it based on, right? Based on the yearly well, we work that you- We're sort of informally doing it now, but what I remember was when, um, when it was you and, and um, Peter, was Peter's last name? Peter O'Connell. I mean, they would go, you know, they had a whole bunch of, and, and it was voluminous. Lee Farr was, the, was our contact over there, and he would come, and um, that was the last one we had, was five years ago. I think by bylaw, the capital improvement committee is, is supposed to be up and functioning. Includes the, the, doesn't include someone from the school, the elementary school. So we changed the bylaw a couple of years ago, and it actually doesn't have, I think, as many um, like like directed positions. Like it's a five-person committee. I think it states a preference for certain pe personnel. We'd have to pull up the bylaw. Do you have it handy, or no? Yeah, because that, that's what I understood that one of the reasons why there was an issue is because the elementary school couldn't coordinate with the other people on it, and so it was tough to get a meeting thing. But, um, I, I'll, I'll stand but, by but I believe that changed. Okay, but again, I'll, I'll stand by my, when we had a nine-person advisory committee, then yes, maybe the two could have been combined, and then we have five people, and, and uh, Yeah, I think we can start with three, and we can just we can pull up the old plan and um, um, see you know see what see what see what we've completed and 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 start to put together the next five years. I mean, I mean the, the things that we were concerned about over the last two or three years was again was the the elementary school roof project, which the numbers are wildly range all over the place depending on what you what you want to do for repairing it. And then again, we were mentioning the highway. There's always, there's always fire trucks, everything else. But if they're not planned in sequence, then you know it's not, it's not the right way to do it. So I think it was, it was certainly great when you were doing it with, uh, with Peter. It was just sort of far apart. Yeah. I guess maybe the volunteers were burned out. It's like the same with our advisory committee. Well, I think it's important that when we put a committee together that committee makes a recommendation that the select board stick to it because I know for a fact that was a good reason that it kind of went away right yes yeah. we brought plans forward and they weren't even brought to the town meeting yep sorry they didn't even make it to the town meeting floor fundamentally the select board kind of killed them uh, I, I get it, but it's important. That's it's, literally why I resign. Yeah, so it's important that when a plan, when we put a committee together, that we take the recommendation and move yeah, forward, yeah. right? You, you, you so it doesn't clearly, negate. You clearly should. Yeah. We, it, think about it, and, but not just summarily discount it. Hmm. I mean, I, frankly, I was just, I was startled. I was on vacation in, out of the country when I got a call and said 16 out of the 19 capital plans we put forward were. Community development block grant. Did we actually vote Marty on? Oh, sorry. When you guys decide. Yeah. I, I did a we motion. We went to discussion. Second, we went to discussion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, and Marty's been chopping at the bit for the last two years to continue on because he was on it before and then somehow it disappeared. So. Mm -hmm. Who's on the capital planning committee now? Right now it's just me, Lori, and Marty. You're on? And Marty and Lori. Lori. We have two more slots, so. You have that t-shirt. All right, so. 
Community Development Block Grant Advisory Committee appointments, Mary Lou Knight. I'd make a motion to appoint Mary Lou Knight. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, American Rescue Plan Act balance and allocations. Ron will take lead. Can I step back? Who's on the CDB? Uh, Bruce, Bruce, me, and Bill Simpson. Bill Simpson? Bill Simpson. And, and now Mary Lou. And now Mary Lou. And? Myself and Bruce Clark. Oh, Bruce, you're back on it? Oh, you <laughs> left. Ron. Yes, with regards to ARPA, I just wanted to uh, remind the, the board that we have until December 31st, 2024, in which to allocate our remaining uh, funds. As of right now, we have $84,897 that have been unallocated uh, and available for, for use. We also have $60,807 that's been allocated, but actually not spent, or um, with the breakdown being uh, $42,067 that were uh, previously allocated for town hall ballroom renovations, but have not been spent. And then we have the $18,740 for the police station uh, engineering and the uh, insulation project, if you will. Uh, obviously, we won't need any of the money for the police station insulation project due to the earmark that uh, Senator Durant has provided for us. And I guess the additional 42,000 for town hall renovations, that's something that's gonna be discussed at next week's Tall the Hall Improvement Committee's meeting to see if there are some, some projects that might be able to util utilize that money. But if not, obviously, Depending on what happens with town hall improvements, we still have a considerable amount of money. Where did that, that, that 42,670 uh, get generated from? How did that number? Let's see, that was originally allocated by the board at, at $100,000. And in fiscal year 24, $57,932 were actually expended. So that was, we so we spent 58000 to paint the upstairs? Um, Is that what it was? Yeah, I, I'm Something not like sure that. exactly what the renovations were. For well, maybe it was 43. No, it was right here. 42. No, it's 57. No, 58. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, nearly 58 was expended in fiscal year 24. I don't I, think it was just paint, though. There was, no, there was, I, a, I, lot there's a, there's a lot of other work yeah. incorporated in that. And they did all this sills or they were fixed a bunch of things up there. So right. what I, basically what I wanted to, you know, may, maybe uh, not necessarily hit the panic button, but it, we are to the point where we probably do have to consider how, how we want to allocate the remaining funds. We, we do have a fallback, if, if you will. Uh, I have discussed it with the town accountant, Lori, and she had indicated that any funds that are not allocated the board certainly has the ability to allocate those into a stabilization type funds uh, prior to 123124, and that way they'll be encumbered. We'd be able to utilize them at a, at a later date, and we, w we still wouldn't have to return anything to the treasury. I was just gonna say some of the expenditures that we raised and appropriated to fix for the library, uh, the fire station, some of those monies that have not been spent we could probably put the, that in this and return that other money to the general fund. Absolutely, yeah. Cor yeah. correct. There so are very few strings attached, if you will, with okay. regards I mean, to how this is Right now, we should probably go ahead and rescind the police station engineering, the 18,000. That did. was gonna be my suggestion. <laughs> well, we pretty well did, right? No, we, well, no I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, mo I'll give you a motion. Form. I'll give you a motion to rescind the vote uh, or the, the uh, allocation of $18,740 for the police station engineering. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and then uh, uh, what about the I'm going to give you a motion to, um, well, actually, no, let's wait until the town hall improvement committee. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would like to allocate more towards whatever they 
need because I know there's some things that need to be done here. What about the windows? Again, I reported back to you guys that uh, Lindsay said that we would be eligible to submit a grant come February or March, right in there. Yeah. Is that correct? Oh, why? Because it's like an insulation cool. type of thing? And realizing that we did have a fairly a large amount of money left with regards to ARPA, as well as in our free cash at the last department head meetings, I did ask department heads to at least start considering are there any projects that they might be interested in at least putting out there or proposing to the select board for either ARPA or for free cash utilization. I did receive back a, a few um, in, in fact. The floor right here it indicated um, there is a um, exterior door at the emergency squad building that she has an estimate to replace at $4,500. And there's also a new roof at the ambulance station with an estimate of $17,500. Now, so would those be eligible for the ARPA money? Yes, they would be eligible for ARPA. What, what door, Donna? Because I talked to Peter and he got, he got money at the last annual town meeting to make repairs. Was, is this the same this or is, is this for the different? Ambulance. This is an ambulance door to the back of our office. The so it's an interior door for $4,500? Not an interior, it's an exterior door. And the only reason it, they gave me an estimate so high is that they re one of the doors they replaced on the fire station, they found that because it's such an old building, when they took the frame out to put the new frame in, there was nothing, no supports to hold it, and they had to have a mason come in and fill around the doorway. And that's what that one cost. It, they don't know what they're gonna find when they pull this out. Hopefully it won't take Major it, it won't take the 4500 but right. they but they did the estimate but assuming they estimate. have to do the masonry work right okay that makes sense and the, the ambulance i mean it's gonna have to be it's been leaking for a while but our our roof's been leaking possibly when the fire department gets the parapet fixed it will stop the leaking uh but it, And, and, and as I said, I mean, we, we do have a little bit of time, but I, like I said, I just wanted yeah, to make sure it stayed on everyone's radar screen. Mm -hmm. I'll just keep adding it to the agenda. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I did get two other um, requests. Uh, they were both from the fire department. One was to um, add $10,000 for the asset uh, repair and replacement account. And the- Oh, other, should we, hold on. That's for the next agenda item. Yeah, I was going to say, it, I personally would, would not like to see ARPA money used for that because these okay. are really more operational and yeah. certainly would make more sense in a All special. Right. So, okay, so, we, I, so we've gone from ARPA to now a special town meeting. Yeah, uh, unless there's other questions with regards to, to ARPA. I'm good with it. No, I'm good. Okay. So the other request, as we kind of segue into the, the special, I'll, I'll, Finish up my. Yeah, I do have one question for, yep. for Donna. So you said that the roof's been leaking for a while. Yeah. Is that is that is it, I'm assuming it's doing more damage the longer we leave it leaking. You mean the floor tiles are all stained um, along that one wall where the parapet is, but um, it's it dries up. Yeah. Water's not. So I'd like to put this Ice back. Ice makes up. it worse. Ice makes it worse. So, 
So does it leak in, in ice conditions or year round? What, what, year can you round, tell us what's- if, the, if there's a driving rain, it will do that. And they're hoping that maybe by fixing the parapet and doing the fire department- The flashing. Flashing, that they can stop it. So that's- So who have you had look at it? Do you know? I don't remember the company, but it's the same company that's doing the fire department now. Gave that estimate. So the one thing that I'd like to utilize more is the regional school. And in speaking to Fantasqua, they've been more than willing to come out and do work with us. So before we uh, make any motions to But is there hire masonry some, work on this and do they do mason? I, I don't no, know. No, that's, that's, that's for the door. Yes. I'm, I'm uh, talking so the roof. The roof yeah. would be pretty straightforward. Yeah, but so what about the top uh, things on the roof there? Those are masoned in when they put the flashing? We could let them. We do, but so before we do anything like that, I'd like to bring our regional school involved and see what they make for recommendations before we just outsource it at the tune of 16000 and and anything seems to be a lot of money nowadays. So not saying they can do everything, but they might point us in the right direction as well. And, and maybe they can take it. Do you want to take point on getting them out sure. there to take a look at it? Yeah, I will. I will. How much work can we give them? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> I guess we'll find we out. If we don't ask, we won't <laughs> get anything. Right, right. right so. We have a hand up in the back of the room. I have a question about the garage door. Are you guys opening it when you need to and then closing it? Uh, we have to go inside and open it. Um, it's just the... Oh, the buttons. The buttons don't work. We put in, we put it, we got new buttons and then we got uh, a new system to punch in the code and nothing seems to be working. It works pretty smooth, but it doesn't the other time. So we just run around the side and oh, we put it inside. So we just we have to have an estimate on how much that's going to be. Okay. Yeah, let's get an estimate on it. That would be great. Unless Mr. Gorman thinks he knows how to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just volunteer to fix it? Or? Grab <laughs> 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 um, So a special town meeting. Do you, are you looking for us to set a date for this, or? Yeah, the I did speak with um, with uh, the town town clerk uh, Siri. He definitely had a preference. <laughs> uh, he certainly did not want it anywhere close to the uh, presidential elections. He is uh, strongly recommending a special town meeting date of Thursday, November 14th, uh, which puts us... Halfway between the election and Thanksgiving. Bingo. Yeah. <laughs> so there's kind of a, a sweet spot there that it could probably work. I have not heard back from the schools yet to see if the, the cafetorium is available, but... If not, I honestly don't think it'll be a uh, large assembly. So we, we might have some different options even if the cafetorium isn't available. Okay. Unfortunately, that date works for me. <laughs> it, sadly, it works for me as well. <laughs> you good with it? No. no. Actually, right. I, I technically. Do we need a motion for that, Tom? Yes, please. I'll give you a motion to um, set the uh, special town meeting for November 14th. For what time? Uh, 7 p.m.? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good with that. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Discussion, endorsement, police union contract, fiscal year 2024-2026, New England Police Melbourne Association. And that's actually a perfect segue from the special town meeting. Uh, one of the uh, reasons why the special town meeting is mandatory is the fact that uh, we do have the police contract 
Uh, I actually have the, I guess, the official copy here. Um, we do have a memorandum of uh, agreement with, that has been signed and endorsed <coughs> by the police union. Uh, it has been double and triple checked by town council, myself, as well as the union representation uh, for its accuracy. So this is really kind of step one. This is necessarily needed so that they could enact the schedule shift from a five and two schedule to a four and two schedule, which will be occurring uh, tomorrow. Well, yeah, I guess technically tomorrow at midnight. Uh, so once the memorandum of agreement has been signed, then it's okay for the uh, police to start adhering to their four and two schedule. Uh, there is a quote unquote clean copy of the contract that um, has just been completed, is being currently reviewed by the uh, police union reps, and we will probably have that available for signature, the endorsement by the board at our next meeting. So this is step one of two, and if you could uh, make a motion to accept and endorse a memorandum of agreement, I think it would make uh, some folks uh, down, the, down the driveway a little bit happy. When do we actually, but we don't sign it tonight? Uh, yeah, you can sign it this evening. signature page here oh actually I take it back that, that was, they only provided one signature line in the memorandum of agreement but as you can see we do have both union reps that have signed it so I'll leave that to the discretion of the board if they want to authorize the chair to endorse or if the entire board wants to endorse I'll make a motion to sign the police memorandum and uh, new contract second any discussion all in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. I'll, I'll leave you the top line. I don't know, it looks like yours. <laughs> so, just point of discussion so one of the logistics of the finances. Correct. Yes, uh, probably at the next, well, cer certainly at the special town meeting. Um, but the um, town accountant, I just emailed her the new salary or new wage chart, uh, as well as all the different language in there. She's in the process of figuring out what that means exactly monetarily. The important thing to remember is this contract start or started in fiscal year 24. So there is an entire year of back pay covering fiscal year 24, plus in essence really the first quarter of fiscal year 25. So there's a considerable amount of back pay that is owed to the police officers. So that's, that's gonna, all gonna be figured out right now. Um, I believe that's gonna be paid in one lump check to each of the police officers. And then obviously, as soon as that's all figured out, their pay will reflect the changes going forward. Do we have an indication whether the, 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 what we estimated was anywhere close to what's actual or not? Yeah. Uh, from my understanding, there was nothing that was set aside in the fiscal year 25 budget that was voted for at town meeting. And nothing was encumbered. And, uh, yes, correct, and nothing encumbered. So this is all going to be, uh, I'll refer to it as new money. on two days off it is, that, is that it, something new? yes that's something new. and how does that impact financially on the town pro field and, and does that mean they get more money per month with this four days on 
not necessarily that they make more money per month i mean they will because there are increases in their wages built into the into the new contract but specifically by doing the changing from a five and two schedule to a four and two square schedule no there's no inherent increase in unless if you i guess the argument could be made that there you may incur additional overtime but until that's realized it it's not additional money they went from a five and two schedule to a four and two they at the five and two they worked an eight hour shift at the four and two it's an eight and a half hour shift that's so correct. are they going to gain at the end of the month something by not working i mean there's, there's an increase from year to year but i don't think it's a significant increase from the four and two or from the five and two to the four and two based on the number of hours they're working at, with the four and two they're working an additional half hour per shift. And how much of an increase did, it, did they, how much of an increase did, it, did they go up per hour or per week? What's the increase? Actually, probably the easier thing is, Percentage. since this is now a, a public document, I can yeah, provide a copy. It's what? I, I can provide a copy. Just If, if you just see um, the town clerk and just put a records request in, we could provide you a copy of that. The whole contract. You can't tell us that in a public form what kind of an increase there was. Well, we'll have to. Oh, yeah. the so, form. so I, I mean, there's a whole table. Uh, the amount of yeah. increase depends on what what step and grade the officer is. So, can we tell you how much a particular officer is getting well, different? No, I'm just curious if there was some a flat across the, the board percentage wise. No. 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 Okay. It's it's a totally it's a totally new refresh table based off of a bunch of negotiations about where to start and where to finish on the pay grade. So it's not, a, it's not an easy, like, here's the one number, that's, that's what the raise is. Yeah. And there's actually two charts, because there's an officer chart and a sergeant chart. Yeah, so we're happy to share the document with you, but it's not an easy, like, it's not a... It's not like 3%. What's, what's the X? Uh, yeah. Right, right, yeah. okay, all right. Because of the step and yeah, the agreed. grade, I don't know what you budgeted to make the comparison. I, I'm sorry, I don't have the info for you, but I think no, no, it's. No, I mean, it, was, it was sort of in the transition, so that's yeah. why. Um, you don't remember the right thing, but the, the, No. <laughs> uh, next item. Open meeting law violation response filed 9-11-24 regarding 
I was going to say, if, yeah. if yeah, if the board uh, approves a response, if you could just make a motion to allow me to endorse the response, and then I can hand that to the complainant as well as send it off to the attorney general's office. Make a motion that um, we authorize the Ron to sign and, and uh, deliver the uh, uh, both the. Uh, Seven. <coughs> I'll second that. Any discussion? Oh, why was the uh, response on the uh, 722 so late? It was supposed to be done in what, 14? Uh, 14 business days, correct. And I will freely admit that one fell through the <coughs> cracks because there was actually two open meeting law violations occurring at the same time on the same meeting that were, I guess, fairly similar in, in their the complaints. And as a result, one was addressed uh, well within the 14 business days, yet the other one was not. Uh, so basically what's occurring now is uh, a bit of catch up, if you will. Okay. Now, we discussed this several times in the past open meeting laws that you were going to approve it, look it over, and then you were going to give it to Brad, and he was going to proofread it to make sure there was no problems. The and, agendas, correct. And, 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 and we still have this problem going on right now. Um, I'm not aware of a recent issue with the agendas. Well. So one thing was the figures were stated at one point, and but the figures weren't the same as in the minutes. You stated certain figures at the meeting, but they weren't the same figures uh, in the minutes. And that's been correct. Correct. Yeah, that that was corrected. Oh, everything that you said has been correct. And then and then on the agendas, those certain items were supposed to be checked by you, and then Brad was supposed to approve them again to proofread them, make sure that we didn't have this problem, and we went back again with the same problem again. I don't believe these are, are new allegations with regards to the agenda. Some, one of them was, yes. Um, but that one was, I believe that was dated back to the, the, the 722. Right, that's that, right, That's yeah. the quote unquote old one. So that's the one that fell through the cracks. Right, so, so that's that, why I'm trying to get a handle on it to say, you know, are we Yes, of, yes. We, we, the, we're going to have a check and balance is what is what is what you told me before. Correct. And yep. it didn't happen. So that's why we're I'm asking we're you striving to be better. Dave, OK. Yes. Yes. All right. I mean, this is this is taxing the board. That, like, yeah. We OK. Have important stuff. But this no, is no, I understand that. OK. Yeah. But it is also important, though, too. Yeah. And in, in fairness, the allegations from the, the 722 was really before we put the new process and, and checks and balances in place. But OK. Since then, it appears to be working fine. Okay. All right, very good, thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Open meeting law violation response filed 722-24 regarding Seven eighteen. Oh, I included that yeah. in my yeah. 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 Both in the motion. Beth did a two for her. Okay. Two for one, so. Yeah. I did. Um, approved select board meeting minutes for 321 24, amended 725 24, 815 24, 5 2 24. Make a motion to approve the 321, the 725, and the 815. And the five two. And the Second. five two minutes, as written. Second. And uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I don't have any other items. Um, so now we'll, we'll make, make a motion to uh, enter executive session under exemption two. Conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel. Or Second. 
Any discussion? Uh, all in favor? Kodelsky, aye. Chafee, aye. aye. Good night, Jeff. Thank you.